Excellent. Well, thanks for all of you for, for coming along to this sort of restart of the Integrated Approaches to Volunteering project. Um, I'm Darren from Helpforce and I lead on the Integrated Care work from Helpforce's point of view. My colleague Paddy, who's the Director of Strategy, is also here and he will talk to you about some of the stuff that we've done around conceptualising volunteering. And we've also got Charlotte here from NHS England and Charlotte will also give you a bit of an introduction midway through one of my presentations about what NHS England are expecting from this. We wanted this to be a relatively informal restart because the main thing that we want from this is to try and find out what you need from us how we can help you progressing volunteering as you know some of you'll remember because we've met previously in the first year of the project it was very much focused on how we demonstrate the value of volunteering to integrated care systems obviously since um, that first year of the project covid happened what we've actually seen is a great development in terms of uh, volunteering in health and care and to some extent that value of volunteering has been proved already but one of the things that we the messages we got quite clearly from the systems that we were talking to over the previous year is that there is a big gap around how the infrastructure to support volunteering has developed um, and I think to some extent some of those questions have been answered as well through some of the, the amazing work that people around the country have done to support volunteering through COVID and some of the initiatives that have been come up through communities. Um, so our focus is really about that infrastructure, really to find out what you've done that worked, how we could share that with other people, but also how we can find out the problems that you have and how we can help you solve those. It wouldn't be a professional meeting if I didn't have slides, and I do have slides, so I'm going to share them with you. Um, there we go. Um, since we last spoke, one of the things that we did, can I just check, can you see slides? Yeah. And I can't see. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Yes. Um, since, since we all last got together in relation to this project, one of the things that we did was to try and do a sort of research report stroke review of how COVID had impacted on um, system level volunteering. So over, um, I think it was uh, around May and June, we spent a lot of time talking to different people in, in systems. We spoke to 12 systems in total, and what we tried to do was talk to people from local authorities, from the voluntary sector, from the NHS, to really get a feel for how volunteering had developed, what the challenges had been around volunteering, and how some of those have been solved. And we found out some really, really interesting things about how this stuff around infrastructure had developed and some of the sort of amazing progress that had been made. But also, and I think one of the really key things that we found as part of our report was the, the tremendous enthusiasm for volunteering that we can now see at a system level, which I think in the first year of the project, we were very much looking about how we try and promote the, the value that volunteering can bring to systems. And I think in some ways, COVID has sort of done that for us. So we've got a lot more, and, and these that I've put up here are some of the key findings we had from our report, um, which I think I emailed out to most of you, but is available on our website, and I'll talk more about where things are on our website because we've done a bit of a revamp of that. But some of the, the headline things have been around the sort of value that systems have found, and particularly in a system leadership level, have found around volunteering particularly some of the innovations that have come up from a community level so some of the stuff that we've seen around covid mutual aid where communities themselves have designed their volunteer response in re um, to reflect the needs of their communities has been an amazing thing to see and some of the stuff around the agility of the voluntary sector to pick up and design um, volunteer projects at, at extremely short notice has been really good what we have noticed is any way we look at it the enthusiasm for volunteering and the capacity for volunteering in communities seems to significantly outstrip the capacity of the statutory sector to make use of volunteers. We, ha we have more volunteers than we have volunteer roles. And that's one of the things that, um, as we progress sort of working through this infrastructure stuff, is looking at how um, systems can put themselves in place to be able to adapt to those volunteers coming forward and quickly utilise them. One of the things that became sort of obvious in talking to a number of systems was there's a certain range of systems that put in place as a response to previous civil emergencies quite extensive um, partnership working around volunteering 
and were very quick to mobilise in response, response to COVID. And, and I think it was that they had a different approach to volunteering, seeing volunteers as a key element of system resilience rather than a nice thing for systems to do. Um, and we thought that was a really interesting bit of learning that we've been trying to spread to other systems. We've, we came up that's only like a snapshot of the things that, were, that we came across um, and I'd be really interested to see whether they resonate with your experience but we came up with some key recommendations that we've uh, tried to share among systems that there should be a role for leaders in systems to embed volunteering as a strategic priority I think that's something that we are beginning to see across systems um, there needs to be a process in place to be able to embed um, volunteers really quickly and that there, sh there should be some sort of standing group, like a steering group or a place where different partners in a system can come together and share that strategic overview of volunteering. And I think one of the things to stress there is what was really clear in talking to people is that um, volunteering is most beneficial delivered at the most local level possible. But there is a role for systems to have that strategic overview of what of, of what each of the different partners are bringing to to um, well, in terms of volunteering and how they can be um, supported to work together. And one of the, the far final recommendation is that people should engage with our integrated approaches to volunteering program. You're all here, so you've all definitely fulfilled that one. These were very sort of broad brush recommendations, and it is about sort of how people can work together. I will take the slides off there because one of the problems with teams as far as I can found is while I share slides all I can see is one person which is a little bit disconcerting because it makes me think I'm talking to one person um, but that, that sort of overview well I'd be really interested to find out does that resonate with your experience over the beginning of the year does it resonate with some of the stuff you're trying to put in place for the, the sort of the, the changes we're seeing for of a potential second wave or an actual second wave Put your hand up, jump in. Darren. Yeah, I'll start um, completely and utterly, Darren. Yeah, I think what we found, we, we don't have a very strong natural resilience community, I suppose. We, down in Devon, we haven't really had that many um, natural resilience things to deal with. What we did find, though, was um, our local authority colleagues in particular. So I work for the STP. Our local authorities uh, colleagues in district councils were astonishing, absolutely astonishing. And as you say, really supporting the very local responses that were happening in the towns and villages in Devon. That was truly great. I think what we're finding now is, um, sorry, I'll, I'll rephrase a little bit. And the reason why they were really supportive is because an awful lot of those jobs um, suddenly became available for people to do within the local authority. So for instance, you know, street services were stopping during lockdown. So people were being redeployed and a lot of people got redeployed into, into responding to the volunteer angle. I think now as business returns back to normal to a degree, particularly in local authorities, there's, there's, the infrastructure's gone again then. So we're relying back on the, on the CVSs. So I think it's a, we're in an interesting position, I think. And I think that's one of the things that we've been quite conscious of is how we don't lose the progress that was made between March and July, because a lot of really good work was done. And there is a temptation to just let it slide. But we are seeing that we sort of need it again now. So and I think our whole focus of this year is how we sort of make the, the changes and development sustainable and, and ongoing. You don't want to have to rebuild this every time. No, I think it proved we need a dedicated internal resource to this. Absolutely. And Leah, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, just to share some learning, I guess, from North Yorkshire. Um, so I'm here on behalf of Humber Coast and Vale ICS, but only speaking for North Yorkshire today. Um, so in our area, we saw it as a combination between not just volunteers, but the voluntary and community sector. And I think that's really key that if you just mobilise volunteers as the NHS volunteers did, it had significant issues. If you use local trusted VCS organisations and infrastructure organisations to mobilise and manage volunteers, it becomes a lot more proactive. So in North Yorkshire, the um, Health and District Councils and North Yorkshire County Council came together to support 23 community support organisations, so locally based VCS organisations, who then coordinated local volunteers and uh, mutual aid groups to ensure that no resident was left unsupported. But what was very powerful is while the volunteers were working on the ground, they had a backup system of the Customer Care Service Plus team at North Yorkshire County Council who would take all queries out of hours where the community support organisations weren't open. 
So it was a it was a joint approach. Um, what I would also stress there is that um, we had a, a secondary backup. So if the CSO volunteers couldn't do it, the customer care team couldn't find a member of staff at county to do it. We have something called Ready for Anything Resilience Volunteers for North Yorkshire. So after the flooding in York and across North Yorkshire a few years ago, we have a cohort of trained WhatsApp emergency volunteers um, who can respond instantly to any emergency. And they were used to pick up the very remote, um, because we're such a big rural geography, the very remote individuals that couldn't be reached by anybody else. Most of them have access to four by fours. And finally, we had React, the military volunteers sat behind them. So quite a sophisticated leveled system of ensuring that nobody fell through the net. Where, we, where it was flawed was working with the NHS volunteers because we had no data sharing or feedback system there. And we're doing a lot to try and change that for the second wave. So I think that's just some of the learning from us. And it was a message that we got that it was largely the northern integrated care systems that had had to have that response to flooding previously that had had the opportunity to build that sort of resilient structure. And uh, hopefully the rest of the country has managed to sort of follow along that. And would you say the stuff that you put in place then is still largely there? Absolutely. So there's now a long term commitment to those community support organisations. However, their funding models are not sustainable unless the health system gets behind funding them. At the moment, you say it's a systems approach, but actually the only people putting their money where their mouth is, is the local authorities. So the health system needs to get behind this with funding, not just saying, oh, it's great that this is happening. Um, they, those community support organisations outside of emergency situations are a frontline prevention service. They're there when individuals don't know where to go. They'll help people live independently for longer and take pressure off the um, health system. So there's a longer term issue here. Some of the other things like Ready for Anything volunteers, yes, they're there. They're a permanent fixture for us and we support them. But you know what? The local authority can't really fund them or do that. As a voluntary sector organisation, I'm funding their work within the local authority, which is just bizarre. So um, it's great. These things do happen, but volunteering isn't free. It requires coordination and um, the system needs to get behind that. I think that's fair. Dominic. Thanks, Darren. Um, just to uh, kind of quickly add to that, um, in, in North Central London, um, just before COVID, we had just started on a, a programme we called uh, Volunteering Plus, and it's um, uh, it's kind of a partnership between the NHS and the voluntary and community sector. So I work for a volunteer centre, I work for a voluntary community sector organisation, I don't work for the NHS. And the idea was that we're going to look at and, and work, uh, how we're going to integrate volunteering across the patch. And then COVID happened and that actually kind of delayed things in, in, in the beginning and then now has become more and more important. Um, and one of the work, bit of work that we've done is to set up a, um, a network, a volunteering plus network, which brings together um, different elements, different uh, people from the NHS, trusts, uh, and also the voluntary community sector to look at the different aspects of how we can work together. Um, and that's been really good and we had a really good response. Um, and Darren, thank you, you actually participated at our last one um, and did a really useful presentation around volunteer passports because that's something that kind of we wanted to, to look at and find out more. But we're very much at the very beginning of our journey, but there is a real uh, a real commitment there to, to make it make it happen. And I really agree with everything that Leah said just before me that uh, you do need to have that sort of system and that lead kind of approach. And now we're looking at some of the we've got I think it's four or five priorities for North Central London. And I think the next one, uh, the next meeting we have is we look at mental health and looking at how we can actually embed because you mentioned embed Darren in your, your recommendation. I think that's really important how we can embed volunteering in those those priorities. So but having that network and getting people together, I think has been really helpful to kind of stimulate contacts, communications that have otherwise not happened before. Excellent. And Dominic was one of the contributors to our report, so it, it reflects his worldview accurately, hopefully. Has anybody else got any COVID stories? I don't know if that's the way, right way to describe them, but um, anybody else got anything that relates to this that in their personal experience? Joanne. Hi. Um, I mean, I agree with everything that's been said and in West Yorkshire and Harrogate, it, it's not dissimilar to that. 
I think the bane of our life continues to be the NHS volunteer responders, which despite feedback from local areas, continues to do their thing from the top down, doesn't connect locally. And they've just started recruiting, for example, in West Yorkshire um, and Harrogate in some of the areas that are in the higher alert areas. So Bradford, um, Leeds, and they didn't talk to local people. They didn't talk to local authorities. They didn't even talk to people in our CCGs or our NHS. I was told once it was all set up and I had the job of then telling all of those people that that was happening. And of course, there is real consternation that they're recruiting new volunteers when actually locally they're trying to coordinate a response to this next phase of the pandemic and the resumption of, of normal critical services around health and care. So once again, that has created an absolute issue for us locally and no one seems to listen. And I've spoken to a couple of users of that service who have used the check in and chat as well, elderly people, and they've said they got people from Devon and Cornwall who were then unable to link them to local services. So it's not like it's really working well for everybody either. So, and I don't think we can continue to ignore this. Someone somewhere has got to address this issue and someone's got to listen. Because like everyone else on this call, locally, we're really trying hard to coordinate to link across providers, statutory services, VCS, a place versus system. And people are really working hard at that and making some good progress. But nationally, we're just not being heard. And, and I think that is a real challenge. I, I don't think that's an unusual challenge from what we've heard. Darren? You're muted. That's the motto for 2020, isn't it? You're on mute. Um, I completely agree with Joe. It, what's interesting is the Devon figures for young chase responders were really high, but obviously they weren't working in Devon. Um, they were working in Yorkshire, which is probably why we didn't see the we didn't see the street level response we were expecting, really. Uh, Candice? Um just building on what Joe said, um we really appreciate um that a lot of this work will eventually pass to systems. But when there has been that kind of damage done to the relationship between the NHS and the voluntary sector through the scheme of um, the volunteer responders to then pass the volunteering um, mantle over to systems and, and, and entrust us with that. It, it then puts pressure on us to rebuild those relationships with the voluntary sector. Um, and also, if that isn't followed by some additional resource and funding, um, many systems will struggle to implement um, the ambitions that NHS has. Um, so we do just need to consider a couple of those um, things if possible. Fair enough. Uh, Charlotte? Hi, thank you. Yeah, so I just wanted to pick up that there is going to be some work around kind of evaluating and integrating and looking at the volunteer responders that's going to be working with systems, but that is kind of a separate, separate to this and um, we will be kind of discussing some of that at the system leads meeting tomorrow so there is some work that's going to be going on and something that's going to be kind of discussed further but not necessarily quite the right session now i guess we'd be able to pick up a bit more of that after tomorrow and that work has been kind of um yeah discussed within that group and with the system leads i hope that kind of helps people a little bit to know that there is work coming on that Joe, oh, Darren, have you got? A, is that a legacy hand or you, you've both it is put a your hand up? Hand I'm a Luddite. I should take it away. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Joe, hi. Yes. Um, so I manage the volunteering program um, across uh, Chelsea and Westminster NHS Trust. So that's two acute hospitals in the west of London, and we we didn't use nhs responders for our volunteer response um to uh to the crisis so we had over 160 volunteers across both of our hospital sites who signed up specifically for the crisis but we recruited those ourselves they didn't come through the nhs responder program so we had a really really strong volunteering response but i would say that um in the two years that i've been here almost two years um it's it's always felt that we've been very separate from from the wider volunteering landscape 
in our in our area in our surrounding communities and I think if anything that that's been exacerbated by the COVID uh, pandemic because we because we're because we've been so busy and because we've been so kind of swamped that actually the, in terms of how we deal with that is just to be completely inward facing with our volunteering response and actually um, this is a really helpful phone this is a really helpful meeting for me to have because I've realized that we do need more avenues and more platforms to have these more wide-ranging discussions because honestly if you ask me I have no idea how volunteering got on over the past six months in with our neighbors frankly you know like in you know so yeah this has been really interesting and I think it is interesting I think you're the only representative of an acute trust who's here today so thanks for that perspective no um Joe Joanne even. Yeah, what well, you can call me what you like, I don't mind, it's fine. <laughs> I just want to pick up a little bit on Charlotte's comment in line with the conversation here because my understanding is this conversation is about integrated volunteering. Integrated volunteering should be all, air, all volunteers in an area, therefore the two conversations are linked. So that NHS responders conversation and this conversation are intrinsically linked because if we're going to be effective in what we're doing, they need to work together. They need to work hand in hand, how, whatever that looks like, whatever the way forward is. So I don't think we can have two separate conversations. I think somehow they, they just need to come together. And then I go back to the point, Darren, that you made where you said there are more volunteers than, than volunteer roles. Well, why are NHS volunteer responders recruiting then? I mean, just a question. I don't know the answer. I'm just saying to you, why are you recruiting if what you're finding is there's all these volunteers out there? So I, I just feel like it has to come together because maybe if we did, that problem might be solved. I don't know. I completely agree with what you're saying around the integration of the work, Joe. Um, my comment, I guess, was more that um, we're going to be kind of discussing the work with the system leads at the meeting tomorrow and after that there'll be more information around this to share so maybe that just right now there isn't much that would I can kind of provide in terms of that information I guess around what that integration and how that works gonna look but after that we'll have a bit more detail regarding that so that we can so kind of oh. Is there a possibility that if there is any output from this meeting tomorrow that we can then cascade it around to all the people that we've got on our list just to make sure that there's like transparency about what's going on across both work streams? Well that we have the system leads that we're working with on that work so that is their role within their systems to kind of talk about that information but obviously a lot of people I think would be on this group would be connected into their particular system leads as well but I can make sure that people are if they're also not some of the system leads are on this call as well so <laughs> um, but yeah we can make sure that everyone's connected up but there will be information coming out through that on how um, the volunteer responder work is going to progress and what the kind what we're looking at through that. Jo you put your hand up. I think that's an old hand should we oh okay yeah <laughs> Let, let's uh, what's useful then is because that, that was the state that we'd got to by um sort of the end of july august and then we were trying to think about well what is it that we can actually do to support you in developing volunteering um the, obviously the, the project last year was very focused on individual volunteer projects what we need now as part of this project is to try and figure out how we can provide value to the work you're doing. When I say we, I mean help force really, and, and this project as a whole. So we've tried to figure out some sort of support offers that we can put together. And if I can just share those. Some of the key things that we've got is we've uh, revamped our website to provide sort of a better opportunity to create groups around themes to help people to come together to talk about shared problems. 
Um, what we want to do over the next couple of weeks is talk to you about what your main problem is in, in relation to developing volunteering offers so we can join you up with other systems that have uh, got similar problems but also to try and find those other systems around the country which might have solved those problems so we can bring you together in some sort of co-production structure within groups that we can facilitate and we can facilitate those on the internet via our website we want to bring together more of these sort of webinars but they have to be entirely focused on what you want to do rather than us picking subjects out of the air so we have our website we have um, our contacts with different systems we have our sort of understanding of what people have told us that they've been working over the last couple of months um, and we want to bring you all together We've got a link here, which is to our Connect group. I'll send you an email out immediately after um, this meeting which, with a link to that. That's also where you'll find the slides for this meeting. And in the future, that's where you'll find the recording of this meeting as well. So what I'll do now is hand over to Paddy because what we have is a framework of which is made up of some of the key issues that people told us they need to resolve in relation to getting volunteering working and Paddy is going to talk you through this framework. Thanks Daz, um, good morning all. So what became clear when we got um, a lot of the submissions, project submission ideas you guys all sent back in January, February this year which seems like a lifetime ago but it was quite interesting when we were looking for ideas for projects what a lot of the systems actually put in in terms of project proposals with things that we kind of we kind of grouped as infrastructure and what people were saying was essentially look there's, there's fantastic volunteering happening on the ground it's actually what's lacking is some sort of infrastructure such that we can ensure that it is integrated and that actually the the priorities and the 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 funding that comes from the nhs is joined up with the great work that's happening on the ground and from a lot of those submissions and lots of conversations we've had since we, we've just come up with this idea of a framework it's not it's not something we're trying to impose anyone. It's supposed to be really a helpful way of trying to draw out some of the things that you guys might be having challenges with that we can help with. And there's kind of three phases to it. I mean, the setup phase, what's been fascinating the last year and a half working with systems and volunteering is, is the progress made in these areas. So the first one, leadership buy-in, when we first started looking at this, I think there was four or five systems that even mentioned volunteering in their public published plans. And I think that's now up to 20 or 30, but Clearly, the combination of the first year of the programme and COVID means that this is now on the agenda of, of a lot of kind of system partnership boards, which is which is great news. That relationships piece, I mean, we picked up on it earlier. I mean, the point you made, um, you guys have all made about the local authorities, the relationships of having the local authorities and the, the voluntary sector players during COVID was key. And, and Darren's report has, has shown that where those relationships were already quite strong, the response was 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 greater you know there was greater resilience in those areas and i think that that is now an area where we're seeing a lot of systems say to us that, that, that the strength of those relationships is absolutely key um and then moving on to things like you know having it embedded in the strategy the investment infrastructure i mean darren you said earlier darren harifax that about you know they need some dedicated investment in terms of a paid internal role again we've we've seen that 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 is the most effective where where, where there is that investment where those roles do exist um, the central dot here about volunteer coordination and pathways, including portability and passporting, which has been a, a very common theme we picked up from talking to lots of systems um, in terms of a challenge and, and how we tackle that and something we, we hope to help with. And then moving through to the kind of delivery phase, and I really that's the, this, this is really the kind of the fruit of building this kind of project, which is then we need to do time projects, which can, which can lead towards, you know, and contribute towards the kind of health outcomes. Um, and, it, and it's interesting that that point in the middle there about sustainable business models that we picked up there, there is still, uh, I mean, I foresee a vision where true intervention, where volunteers are, are maximising the value of this stuff is where NHS funding is reaching local authorities and voluntary sector schemes and that the evidence can be proven to show the impact they're having on the health system in terms of prevention and, you know, keeping um, people out of, unnecessarily out of hospital, etc. So I think that 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 is the kind of goal to move towards is how do we fix that integration so i think that that's been a common challenge we've, we've seen from, from talking to a lot of systems as well would be an interesting one to debate so like i said the framework is this we're looking to impose definitely not it was really just to draw out possibly some um, some topics or some common themes that 
this is the time in the coming months. Excellent. Thank you for that. Just before we go on to just sort of sense checking some of that, I thought it'd be useful for Charlotte to give us a bit of um, an overview of what NHS England are expecting from this project in, in this coming year, six months. Thanks, Darren. Um, so as kind of has already been mentioned, I guess there's so much has changed with regards to volunteering as part of the kind of response to COVID and support locally and all the different things that have happened there and we want to make sure that we kind of build on those enablers to make the most of that progress and not just to kind of revert back to previous ways of working when these changes have kind of been implemented and we can take those forward. Also just the awareness of volunteering, voluntary sector support and the benefits and the huge amount of flexibility and adaptability and all the opportunities that that offers we want to kind of continue to build on that awareness and also just to look at what kind of legacy there can be from this a positive thing out of that kind of out of the covid response of all the other things that have happened we obviously at the same time understand that there's a huge amount of pressure on the systems at the moment and that this is kind of going to be ongoing with winter pressures and with the continuing response to COVID as different kind of different tiers change across the country and those kind of requirements change. So we know that people obviously will have a lot going on and we don't want this to be an additional pressure but a supportive group where people can share learning and experience and help each other and so we want obviously people to be engaged in a way that works for them. There's no kind of requirement that you have to be on every meeting and you have to join everything it's just that as and when it works for you and how best supports your kind of your system your communities to make the most out of this and get the maximum benefit for it that you can so it's really about kind of how we best support you to share that information share that learning and to spread the great work that's going on to hear about it to make it better known not just with your in, within your own system, but for NHS e and I and Help Force to be aware of it so that we can really help promote all the great things that are going on out there because they're not necessarily as widely known about as they should be and as kind of champion all that. So it's really, yeah, it's for you. It's your work and what best helps you. And I think that's just the kind of key point that I wanted to raise. Excellent. Thank you, Charlotte. Cody, did you want to say, some, say something? I see your hand up. Yeah, thanks, Darren. Uh, thanks for that. That's really beneficial. So I'm um, the project manager for um, integrating volunteering in Bristol, North Somerset and South Gloss. Um, I'm quite new in post. I only started a couple of months ago, so I wasn't here in this sort of initial kind of setup phase. I wasn't meant to be starting in April, but um, got delayed in starting because my background is as a clinician so I got very quickly pulled back into a clinical role before I could start unfortunately so and looking at what some of the other areas are doing you know we're really in our infancy I would say probably at the moment within within my area um, on this on this project so this is really beneficial for me you know to be able to sort of um, see what else is going on around the country and share some ideas and things I'm not sure if these kind of meetings are, are, are regular or semi-regular things that you do, but it's definitely really helpful. And I like that sort of framework, Paddy, that you presented as well. I think that, you know, a mantra that I've tried to kind of stick by, which I'm sure you're all probably the same, is about not reinventing the wheel and not trying to come up with all of these weird and wonderful new ideas when, you know, various parts of that are going to exist either within our areas or, um, in other system areas you know much like some of the stuff that that um some of you have mentioned as we've gone on so i think it's really good about that sort of just information sharing really and keeping in touch with each other um about what is going on and and i like the idea about setting up those kind of um targeted groups that, that you mentioned you know if we've got an area that's specifically looking at training you know or, or something like that then linking those <coughs> systems up i think is a really good idea um, because again, that's you know we're trying to integrate within our own system, so it can only be beneficial, hopefully, if we try and integrate ourselves as well. Um, just on that note, slightly separately, Darren, I'll, I'll, 
pick this up with you after if need be, but I can't actually sign up to help force. The link is broken to register, there's, it's not doing anything. Um, I don't know if we might be able to look into that because obviously I'd love to get, get in on that. So uh, I've got access to, to that information. Yes, absolutely. The link I sent in my first email is different to the one that's relevant now and I will send it out straight after the meeting. So it's, um, it's I broke it basically, but um, I can send you a new link out. Uh, Candice, you asked if there is going to be any reporting and monitoring in the next six months of this program. What do you mean? Um, yeah, I know that it's um, very much changed in, in year two and it's now more of a sharing kind of um, uh, peer support kind of um, model. Um, but I'm just reflecting on what Charlotte said earlier around um, understanding the pressures that systems are under at the moment and, and adopting, you know, quite a light touch approach. I just wondered if that extended to um, any kind of formal reporting or monitoring and whether there was any kind of expectation of systems in the next six months, you know, to produce any kind of, um, this is what we've done with help force in the last six months. Ah, right. Okay. I understand that. Um, no, basically, uh, there's a requirement on, on us as the people that are here to support you to, to report and be accountable for, for the level of support we're providing. But there isn't a requirement on you to report on your involvement within this. And really, what, what we want to do is move this project or programme to a state where we're actually developing useful products. Which So if people want to talk to us about portability or passporting, we can produce something that is usable by systems. So we want to be accountable in, in, in the quality of the things that we develop and the resources that we build for you to use. Um, Obviously, the quality of that is going to be largely dictated by how much engagement we can get from people like yourselves to make the relevant products and make them usable for you. So, so there's the impetus on our part to, to engage with you, but it's it's not necessarily the same pull from the other the other side. Yeah, and just um, quickly, while while um, I'm not on mute, um, um, my only my only concern is that there's a real um, and this is probably mainly um, uh, for Charlotte and Charlotte's team. Um, there, there's an ongoing real risk of fragmentation here between the different programs that are taking place. So this program, NHSVR, and also Karen McKenzie's leadership program. Um, all, all three of these programs are having the same conversations and, and have many of the same people involved, or when they don't have the same people involved, those people may not be linked up with each other in the way that they should be, which re does result in some fragmentation and duplication. Um, so I, I just think that um, anything that can be done to integrate these three programmes with each other um, going forwards would be really helpful, um, especially for systems. Thanks. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Candice. And Carrie and I are working very closely together in our team, and we're also both doing some work on the volunteer responders as well. So that is exactly what we're trying to do at the moment. And I think it was mentioned at the previous webinar as well around the work of the VCSE leadership program and doing a kind of sharing some of that information with these groups as well so that people are aware and can make those connections locally and so that we do start to kind of bring those all together. But we are, it is a big focus for us and we are working on that as well. Um, Leah. Um, yeah, just a few reflections really on what you put up on the slides. So I'm not sure if they're targeted at systems as in health um, colleagues, not VCS colleagues, because I think those of us who run infrastructure organisations and volunteer centres and CVSs, we already link into quite a lot of networks that we would get that information on volunteering support from. So. NAVCA, NCVO, ACRE, mm -hmm. our own local um, VCS network. So I guess um, it's great that there's more resources there, there always is, but I, I guess just to manage expectations about how much the VCS might dip into them compared to health colleagues who may not already have those kind of networks um, and perhaps not reinventing existing materials that, to be honest, I've been bombarded by new materials on how you should volunteer during COVID. And we, we, we advise all the other 10,000 charities on how volunteering happens. We kind of know this stuff. It, it, it's our bread and butter. So I, I think some of that just needs acknowledging in the room that volunteering isn't new. We've been doing it for a, a very long time as organisations. 
Um, but you know, we can never have enough stuff, I guess. Um, but but it'd be great to see some of the resources on this really tackle the things that are really difficult for us in the voluntary sector. And those are institutional issues such as NHS volunteers, the lack of connection between national programmes like VCS Emergency Partnership nationally and the NHS volunteers that we're trying to get changes. And we're meeting, you know, in military like cells every week with the VCS EP and there's no link into those NHS volunteers. So there's some really tricky stuff that you could get your teeth into from our perspective as part of the system. So I guess it's just a plea for that. If there was a product we are missing, we're hearing a lot about volunteer passports at the moment. So it's in the Danny Kruger report. It's in a lot of the recovery plans locally. Um, it's coming through from the system. Um, if there are any of those out there already, I'd love to see some of that material. Um, I know NCVO and others are doing work on this, but if there's something that exists that works across the health system, the local authority and the BCS, I would welcome some information and some examples of that. Um, yeah, so so, so my plea is go for the tricky stuff. Yeah, and absolutely. I think the thing to stress is I, I don't want to be recreating something that somebody else has already made. So, and, and I think that's the key sort of approach we're going to be taking is if we can find people that have solved these problems, we will point people to those solutions because you know, duplication is a waste of time and money for all of us. Yeah, and just to add, Daz, I mean, we definitely don't want to be, you know, recreating you know, guides on how to do volunteering on the ground and volunteering practice. That's not health forces expertise. I mean, what we're trying to do here is enable conversations around the really difficult challenge of integration, essentially. But it's integration in the context of volunteering. Integration is clearly hard, full stop. But I, I think that that's where they're, they're the topics we're probably most interested in, is those integration points that you people talked about on these calls. But the biggest integration point is NHS volunteers. I, I, I'm, I'm a broken record now, so but let's let's solve that one. And I think you'll get a lot more faith from the voluntary sector that we, we are integrating. So one of the things that we'd asked when we did this session last week is what are the problems that you need help with? And that's a bit of a broad question, really. And, and it's a, we don't intend to put you on the spot around that. Um, passporting, portability is one thing that has been quite consistent across systems. And I think is one of the things that we're possibly going to be probably going to be looking at in some respect. Um, some of the other things that people mentioned were about managing supply and demand of volunteers and where the um, where you've got a, a lack of volunteers within the NHS but an oversupply of volunteers in the voluntary community sector, how you manage that supply and demand across systems, um, how people begin to work with volunteers within primary care and how we can do some work around helping people develop relationships. And then I think what we're really interested in doing there is not teaching people how to build relationships but showing those systems that have got those quite advanced relationships and structures and partnering them with other systems that might not have developed those so they can learn from each other rather than us teaching but and and i think to sort of emphasize leah's point what we're looking at is from the perspective of how we can engage the skills within local authorities and voluntary sector with the need within the nhs and i think that's where help forces peculiar skill is is that intersection between the nhs and the wider sort of sector because there are other people that, that are dealing with that sort of on the ground volunteering thing how do those sort of three things resonate with you and i've got a number of hands up there but i'm quite aware that joanne had a hand up from before so joanne do you want to say what you were going to say and answer that question or yeah i i was going to raise something you haven't mentioned which is around employee volunteering within the nhs it's something we are beginning to look at in west yorkshire and harrogate because surprisingly there isn't a scheme a consistent scheme across our nhs um, that offers opportunities and paid time out for staff to volunteer and give their time in other ways. And I think it's a little bit remiss of us in the NHS if we don't offer our own staff that opportunity. And there are some great models of employee volunteering schemes. So I wondered if that might be something people would be interested in, in thinking about. I know that's a, I'm coming from another angle there, but it's just something that's coming up quite a lot locally. It's not something that anyone's mentioned to us before, but it sounds really good. I, I'll be I, happy to throw that in there if people are interested. Yeah, I mean, there's interested in our par interest in our partnership, and we're going to have a look at how we can do it. But if others are interested, it would be great to have a little group sort of thinking about what that might look like. 
and how we might direct those people to best use their skills. So not going and doing painting rooms, but actually using their skills, whether it's in finance or as a health expert or, you know, to, 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 to volunteer within the voluntary community sector. And it would also build such great links, won't it? You know, so much understanding. So I'd be really keen if anyone else is. We did talk to Sandwell Public Health last year that as a um, they, they'd set all of their consultants in public health had to spend a certain couple of days a month volunteering with commissioned services to understand how they worked and they did create an interesting model around that and the benefits to their employees were really really good so happy to sort of link them into it as a sort of model that could be replicated in some way. Yeah, I mean, we're open minded at the moment, but what, what I might ask to our leadership has been that they give the equivalent of five days per year paid time for people to volunteer. So, for example, they could do a trustee meeting once a month and that would be a part of their paid work. But it has to be linked to skills development. And we know it's good for mental health, etc. Don't we volunteering? And it's it's like give back. It's that it's part of that. So I'm I'm just keen if there's anyone else here that's interested in um working together on evolving something that we might be able to adopt that would be fab excellent cody did you have a point yeah thanks dan um yeah i thought i'd just pick up on that challenges aspect um i think relationships is, is obviously something that's already already been highlighted but definitely i'm finding as well at the moment in this sort of early stage that i i've, I've got a project group with probably about 2025 20, um, various VCS organisations, local authorities, infrastructure, that sort of stuff. And most of them, I would say, are quite, you know, when I've sort of sold this to them and said this is what we're trying to do, have been really excited about it, really excited to work with us, um, and I've got some great ideas to share. And a, a small number of them, I've really, really had to sell it, um, and they've really struggled to see the vision. And the opinion from some of them seems to be, well, what's the benefit to my organisation? You know, because in, in, in my eyes, this is, you know, this is benefit in our sort of system areas with us integrating and is, is almost a wider benefit rather than I can specifically give you as an organisation this. Um, and yeah, it's difficult, I think, sometimes to try and manage that when some of these are quite big organisations as well that are saying, well, I'm not getting anything out of it. So uh, what do you want from me sort of thing? Um, and that's been a, a challenge I've come across a couple of times and, and even within my first couple of meetings I've had people that are I'm, I'm struggling to get that buy-in from. One of the things that we did last year was put together a leadership case around volunteering primarily focused at NHS trusts about it's like a document that you can take to a trust leaders and sell the concept of volunteering the benefits that, that come to those sort of um, quite rigid NHS organisations so be happy to talk to you about some of the things we learned in putting that together. Yeah, that'd be great. I think Leah's just made a good point as well, actually, about um, just general fatigue in the sector. And I'm, you know, I'm conscious that on a project like this, you know, we're asking so many people to come and work with us within our systems and they've got no extra time or money or resource to do it. You know, we're asking people to come and give their additional work time um, to yeah. come and work with us. So, yeah, no, I think it's, um and obviously that's a factor I'm acutely aware of in, in how we can help and work with you because we don't want the help and support we can provide you to be a burden to you. We absolutely have to be sure we're adding value to you and that, that you're clear on, on how we can help you. So, you know, the, the offer is there, but we just want to productively take it up or get you to take it up. Um, so just finally, I don't really think I need to share this as a slide because it's only got like a few words on it, but um, what we want to check with you is what what's the good stuff that you've done that we can share with other people what are the biggest challenges that you're facing at the moment that we can help with or we can find other systems that can help with do you know other systems that you would like to work with or or know of things that they've done that you would like to sort of be put in touch really just comes down to what can we do to help you which is a broad question What I will be doing after this meeting is I will obviously follow up with the, um, the the link to the to our website where you can find the things like the slides and the copy of our report, but also 
happy to try and arrange conversations with you to sort of see what we can do to, to help you, what your areas of interest are. Um, anything that you are trying to sort of solve at the moment, we probably know of another system that's at least trying to solve the same problem or has made some progress and we can join you up together. Joanne. Um, just a quick question really, Darren, about, you know, the previous projects that came through this work stream. Um, I mean, we did something around volunteering in mental health settings and, you know, we wanted to follow on from that. And of course, we now we're doing what we can within the resource we have. But it's back to that. We're just asking things from the voluntary community sector that they're not paid to do. Um, is there any intention at any point to be able to pick up some of those things? Because our work around mental health is now more relevant than ever. And actually, it's such a shame that we can't now take that forwards that you know there was great learning it's been shared widely there's real buy-in across the region but we we're just not resourced to do that and whilst we're looking elsewhere to be able to do it um you know how tight budgets are so i just wondered the question really is is there any plans to pick any any of that work up or is that just basically done um and i know that is great work because i've read the report on it and it, it, it was a, a really good idea and i know you've managed to take some of it forward mm. but um at present there won't be a route into funding through this pro program okay but, but is there is there is, is it funding that you need joanne or is it more help at looking at how you can resurrect these projects and take them forward just um, yeah, we haven't, we haven't, um, I mean, we're trying our best and we've got, had a group together looking at this and we're doing everything we can within the resource that's currently available within health and the voluntary community sector. But there was so much good learning from it. We were really hoping to extend the reach quite a lot more widely. Mm. And there's a limit to what we can do with the capacity that, that we have. Yeah. Um, so there's a great will behind it from both health and VCSE. That's not our issue. And mental health settings are really keen. But you can only do what you've got the capacity and the resource to do, can't you? Yeah, so I mean, that's our block. I wouldn't, I mean, I think definitely think we should pick it up and have a conversation and, and, and you know, follow on conversation and see what we can do because um, it, whether it's a, a topic that we pick up more generally, you know, one of the topics I've picked up on this call is, is the funding challenge. So actually, is that something we look at as a, as, a, as a group if a number of trust systems are saying, well, actually, we've got some great ideas, we know what we want to do, but trying to identify where the funding comes from where it flows through to could be an interesting topic to discover but also you know we're not ruling out any any challenges if you if all your challenges how do we resurrect this problem well, we can come and look at that whether that's a group topic or whether we we can offer a bit of advice ourselves we're very willing to do that thank you thank you that would be appreciated and like i say i don't know if anyone else is has had projects that they ran as part of this program and that they're now facing the same challenges um but I'd, I'd be interested if there's any way we can follow that through so that we can, because it's really about positive change, isn't it? And reducing dependence on health services. And, and in the model we were looking at, it's people that have had or have current mental health issues supporting others with more acute issues. So it's so prevalent. It's just, you know, it's very current, isn't it? Very much. Having spoken to a lot of the different systems about the applications that were made last year, I am aware that there are some that were managed to progress through just internal system resources, some that just came to an end at the application stage. I think there is some value on using our forum, which all the people that made original applications are a member of, to open that up as a discussion to find out where people got to. Um, okay. I, I think that's a useful conversation to have between you. Yeah. Okay. And another thing we've not agreed with NHS England yet, but at some point sharing all those projects and ideas, which we can't in the current form because there's things like costings and commercial stuff in there. But is there a way or is it useful that we could try and open up some of the ideas there and share that around with other systems, even if they're things that mm -hmm. can't be taken forward either due to funding or, I mean, to be honest, with most of the projects we, we, we looked at, a lot of them were just shelved really because of COVID. It just they, they they were really fantastic ideas that had long term you know, strategic value in terms of things like health outcomes um, and, and prevention, but they 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 just kind of been pushed to the wayside by COVID. So that's where most projects got to, didn't they, Daz? But it'd be very interesting to pick that up again. Um, that's everything from our end. As I say, I will follow up. Um, thank you very much for giving your time and really hope we are going to stay in contact with you all.
you'll be getting emails from me whether you like it or not but um I would, we'd really like to sort of proactively engage with you via those emails um please yeah do stay in touch you've all got my email address or you will have access to our um, forum and our um, website um once again thank you very much <laughs>